Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the regular open meeting of Asuyas Town Council, Monday, August the 20th, 2018, 2 p.m. in Council Chambers. So first off would be the adoption of some minutes, the Committee of the Whole Minutes of July the 16th, the regular open minutes of July the 16th, and the special open minutes of August the 2nd. Could I have a motion, please? Thank you very much. Councillor um, Rhodes, Councillor Youngberg. All in favor? Thank you very much. Business arising from minutes. I don't think there is anything. Is there anything to be added to the agenda? Ms. Van Vianen? No. Nope. Thank you very much. So could we have a motion to adopt the agenda as printed? Thank you. Councillor King, Councillor Campbell. All in favor? Thank you. So first off, we have a, uh, a delegation of one, and, uh, and I would like to introduce uh, Sonia Simic, who is the executive director of the Robert L. Conconi Foundation. And uh, they have very kindly donated some land to the town of Vesuvius over near the Palms. Uh, and we are quite delighted to accept this including all of the things that go along with it that's going to take us quite a while to deal with. But we're happy to do this, and I would like to invite Ms. Simic to come up and uh, give us a little information on the Conconi Foundation. Uh, thank you very much. Please come up to the microphone, Sonia. <clears throat> Good afternoon. Thank you uh, all for having me today uh, and for making this inv uh, invitation. Uh, Robert Alconconi Foundation was established 15 years ago by a family based in Vancouver. We've um, given nearly $9 million um, to organizations in our province uh, up to this point. And um, we focus in um, three priority areas, healthcare, social services, and um, education. Uh, we um, were owners of this land in your community and wanted to make sure that we stay true to our mission and that something good for the community um, comes um, out of this um, land that we've owned. Um, so we um, seeked various options and uh, you know, the most natural um, sort of path forward was to consult um, both the community here and to make this donation of land. Um, and so we um, look forward to um, hearing more about the community consultations um, and discussions with the Palms um, that will um, sort of um, happen in the near future to figure out what is the best use of this property and how it can best serve this community um, so it, it is to everyone's benefit. Um, and we'll be watching this and, and looking for ways in which we can help support it. Well, and we just, from all of us on council and staff, we just want to thank you very much for this generous offer. And we will certainly um, keep you apprised of the steps that we take in order to make this work not only on behalf of the foundation, but for the town of Asuya. So, um, so we are, we're just delighted. So we thank you very much and we thank you for coming up today and having lunch with us and, um, and, and giving us a little background. Anybody on council want to? No, are I you? I think I would just say, uh, yeah. th thank you. Yeah, <laughs> we all say ditto. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so Sonia's on her way back to Vancouver now. You might run into the drummers. No, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we want you to um, to get on the road and um, and drive safely back there. And we certainly look forward to seeing you um, again up here. And uh, we will certainly do our best to live up to the ideals of the foundation. And we will keep you informed. And we will certainly, from the town's point of view, do many uh, consultations and look at how we can not only do this legally but um, fairly and for the best um, use of the property in the town of Vesuvius. So we all thank you very, very much. Well, thank you, and I just want to say a special thank you to Barry Romenko for being so patient and working with me all these months. Thank you. Thank you. Good. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you very well, much. Thank, thank you. you.
Okay, so we're going to go on to uh, water matters. And uh, first is the water district. Is that what it is? I'll flip to that in here. Water districts 8 and 9 financial accounts. And to report on expenditures from accounts payable for water councillors and council approval. So water district cash requirements to August the 20th are in the amount of $44,987.83. So Councillor uh, Marrera moved the, uh, to approve that. Councillor Ray seconded that. Um, all in favor. Thank you very much. And next is the water meters the wrong spot. The purchase of new water meters in the recently twinned irrigation district number eight. That would be Mr. Dinwiddie. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, the installation of water meters on all twin domestic water services was included in the overall phase one budget approved by the provincial and federal governments for capital cost assistance grants. The primary purpose of the water meters is to monitor water usage and thereby ensure that domestic connections are not used for irrigation on properties that have irrigation services from system number eight. The town of the Soyuz will require to purchase 143 water meters, 96 of which are pit meters, <coughs> for the areas now serviced with domestic water as a result of water twinning contracts one, two, and three. The meters provide a means of ident to identify excessive use of twin up for from the twin domestic system. As stated in the attached recommendation letter from True Consulting Limited, past experience in other communities shows that some agricultural proponents take advantage of twin systems for irrigation to the greatest extent practical. Uh, the recommendation letter from True Consulting Limited explains three options for the purchase of these water meters and the Operational Services Department agrees that option number three is the most desirable. Town Council will also find attached a copy of the invoice from Fred Surridge Limited for the purchase of Neptune's newest solid state Mach 10 water meter. With no moving parts to wear out, this meter should reduce maintenance costs for the Operational Services Department. The implications for the community are that water customers in Irrigation District Number 8 will be able to more effectively monitor their water consumption and hopefully correct any wasteful behaviors. Organizationally, the Operational Services Department will also be able to more efficiently monitor unusual water consumption readings, investigate these problems, and correct them in a timely manner. The purchase price for 143 Neptune Mach 10 water meters is $91,043.99 plus taxes and is within the $130,000 approved budget for this final contract of Phase 1 of the System No. 8 Rural Water Twinning Project. Significant dates in order for these new water meters to be installed this autumn. It is recommended that Town Council approve this purchase as soon as possible. Sustainability, more effective monitoring of water consumption should result in increased water conservation behavior. Options before Town Council are that Town Council approves the purchase of 143 Neptune Mach 10 water meters from Fred Surge Limited to be installed in Irrigation District Number 8. Option number two is that Council approves either option one or two as described in the recommendation letter from True Consulting Limited. Or option number three is that Council requests additional information prior to making a decision. Administration recommends Town Council adopt option number one. Thank you very much. Can I ask a, a question? Who puts them in, not Fred Surge? No, uh, Fred Surge just supplies the water meters. What we would do is we would then tender a contract out in the fall. Uh, hopefully a local contractor would be hired to install the meters. <coughs> okay, thank you. Yes. The $130,000 budget originally approved, does that include the installation? Yes. $130K? So it's your uh, hope that it comes in under $40,000, I guess, for the installation? Yes. Right. That's our Confident? hope. Confident? Uh, we think it can be done, yes. Okay. Uh, Councillor Marrera? Are these meters going to be uh, in effect as soon as they're in, or are we going to wait until everybody's on? Uh, no, we should be able to read them once they are installed. We currently have a brand new water meter reader, and once these things are installed, they become operational right away. And so the next time we read the meters, they should be working. Uh, we tend to read the meters on a kind of a quarterly basis now just to get a feel for what the meters, see if they're working or not. No, that's, that's not what I meant. Oh. Yeah. Are, are uh, they going to be in effect like uh, for the amount you're using? No. And if you're over? No, they're just for information purposes. Oh, okay. They're not for billing purposes at all. It's just to provide information on how much water you're using. You okay? It's not a billing thing at all. Okay. 
So um, is there somebody who would like to go I'll ahead. move option number one. Thank you. Nope. Are you seconding it? Okay. So, Councillor Moreira seconding that. Uh, all in favor? Thank you very much. Thank you. And next is, this doesn't seem to show up on the right page. Okay. Is it not? It's one page off, isn't it? Is that? That's your fault, not Brianne's. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a computer. <laughs> okay. So the next is the council resolution to support the grant application for funding uh, from the Canada BC Investing in Canada Infrastructure Program. And that, I think, is Mr. Dinwiddie. Thank you again, Madam Mayor. Okay. Uh, the Town of Osoyas has committed to the, to the Interior Health Authority to address drinking water quality deficiencies in the service areas of irrigation systems 8 and 9 by constructing twin domestic systems in accordance with the master plan prepared in 2008. The twin program was undertaken in phases and to date the following phase has been completed. Irrigation system number 8, phase 1, which consisted of contracts 1, 2 and 3, they are now complete. The next stage of this process will be the construction of phase 2, the southwest sector supply main and east side of highway and a water main on the east side of the highway of 97 and phase three is the west side of Highway 97 in irrigation system number nine. The objectives? The objectives of phases two and three of the rural water twinning for irrigation system number nine are one, improved reliability of service to the southwest sector area of the municipal water system, system service area. The area is currently serviced by an unlooped 200 millimeter water main. Two, reduce the number of dead-end distribution mains in the southwest sector area, thereby reducing stagnant water quality-related issues and the requirement for flushing. Three, increase available fire flows in the southwest sector area, consistent with the requirements of medium density development that has been constructed in the area over the last 15 years. And four, provide water supply from the municipal system to the proposed twin domestic water service, service area of irrigation system number nine, where approximately 750 residents live. Uh, currently, the long-term debt financing is at a rate of 3.21%, speculating the rate to increase to 5.21% in 2020 when the water treatment plan is scheduled to start as per the town's five-year financial plan. If the town borrows the $1,538,615, which is our share, through MFA's long-term debt, 20 years, the annual payment would be $106,650.19. If the same amount was borrowed in 2020, at an interest rate of 5.21%, the annual payment would increase to $137,422.49, a $30,722.30 annual increase. <coughs> the town does not need electoral approval for water capital borrowing as per Section 20 of Order in Council 1870. It would be recommended that the town use operating funds available for capital projects rather than increasing water rates. The funds available for capital projects in the water operating fund with the assumption of a 2% annual increase are in 2019, $532,660. In 2020, $576,720. 2021, $599,030. 2022, $600,420. Our current reserve balance in the water fund is $2,640,373.83. If the town borrows the $1,538,615, the funds are used from operating the f and the funds are used from operating funds available for capital projects. The effect to the annual funds available would be 2019 $456,010. Uh, 2020, $470,070. 2021, $492,380. 2022, $493,770. This approach would bring down our available fund, would bring down our available funds down to 2016 levels, yet still in good position. The town's annual operating funds available from the previous years are listed below. <coughs> if considering Rate increases to pay debt for the debt servicing water councillors need to be involved in the approval and an $18.32 per domestic single family resident and percentage allocation to remaining rates would be required. If the water district was to pay an increase of 19% or $77.70 would be needed. These options are not recommended by staff as there are sufficient op 
available operating funds available to pay the debt servicing. A cost estimate for phases two and three of the rural water twinning for irrigation system number nine has been prepared by True Consulting Limited for Town Council's review. Please note that True Consulting Limited will be preparing and submitting this grant application for the Operational Services Department. The implications for our community are improved water quality for the residents of irrigation system number nine and the elimination of the need to issue an annual boil water notice to area users from April to November. Organizationally, as a result of looping the domestic the water distribution system, reduced flushing requirements for the operational services department. Budget-wise, the total estimated cost of phases two and three of this project is $5,771,000. The town of Soyuz would be responsible for approximately 27% of this cost, which equals the $1,538,615, which would be paid from either by borrowing or water reserves. Significant dates, the application for grant funding must be submitted to the fund by August 31st, 2018, <coughs> and sustainability, improved compliance with the drinking water protection and interior health recommended standards for public drinking water. So the options before Town Council are, uh, Town Council passes a resolution to support the Operational Services Department of True Consulting Limited application for grant funding in the amount of $4,232,385 from the Canada BC Investing in Canada Infrastructure Program Green Infrastructure Environment Quality Substream for rural water twinning of irrigation system number nine with the town's portion coming from borrowing in the amount of $1,538,615. Option number two is the Town Council passes a resolution to support the Operational Services Department of True Consulting Limited application for grant funding in the amount of $4,232,385 from the Canada, <coughs> Canada BC Investing in Canada Infrastructure Program, Green Infrastructure Environment Quality Substream for Rural Water Twinning <coughs> of Irrigation System number nine. Excuse me for one second. <laughs> The title is way too long. <coughs> With the town's portion coming from operating and reserves in the amount of $1,538,615. Option number three, town council does not pass a resolution of support for the above noted project. Option number four, <coughs> council requests additional information prior to making a decision. Administration recommends town council adopt option number one, <coughs> which allows us to borrow on lower interest rates for this project and saving our reserves for our future water treatment plant. In addition, our debt load for the water fund is very low at $132,630.13. And there is significant room available as per our liability servicing limit of $3,1,293, for which we are utilizing $458,618. Thank you very much. So you're recommending option one. Mm -hmm. Councillor King. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. If we <coughs> weren't to get the grant, would we still borrow the money and part the procedure with some of them? <coughs> <laughs> well, we, uh, t <coughs> if we get the grant, we, uh, we have to still have to pay about 27% of the grant, so we would still I respect that. that. But if we don't get the grant, would we still borrow money to start the project? That ultimately is a council decision, um, but what um, what I what I would recommend is uh, we would then short or make the project into a lot more segments mm -hmm. um, to basically spread it out over a longer period of time if we don't get the grant funding. Um, being able to utilize the low interest rate at at this <coughs> point in time would be beneficial for us um, using our you know existing surplus. Um, Mm -hmm. operating funds to take care of that but uh, I I don't see borrowing the full amount if we don't get the grant funding you know or that would be a discussion that was of council my question yeah would we just still borrow the 1.5 million yeah and start part of the project or would he just kind of come back to us again with it would probably be a different plan okay yeah. thank okay. you Councillor Campbell thank you as painful as that was for you to read, it, it was, was almost as painful to listen to. <laughs> I, I, I don't mean that in an insulting way. It's that this is a very complex uh, yes. report. And, and I guess my question uh, to Mr. Zackel is, I want to understand a little better why we're reluctant to look at, at the option of rate increase. Um, over the previous years, um, 
I was under the understanding we've been increasing our rates to increase our available operating funds to do capital projects. We've got up to a threshold where we're a little over 500,000 annually um, that we're able to do and um, felt, you know, it's a consideration that we could look at this time of utilizing some of those operating funds um, to, to pay for that. Um, we've got a few debts that have come off for the water water fund and it's just, you know, the timing was right for that. Okay, thank you. Okay. Councillor Rhodes. Uh, thank you, Mayor McCordoff. Um, so you're, you're suggesting that we uh, borrow the 27% if we're successful in that. Borrowing the money comes with an interest attachment to it. Um, is there any logic in us uh, considering paying for it because we actually do have the money available? Um, uh, even if we paid this out, we still have a substantial amount of money. And I'm wondering if you could comment on the pitfalls of paying the note directly. Well, ultimately, we've got a couple very large um, water capital projects that we have in our horizon in our five-year financial plan, um, one of them being the water treatment plant. Mm -hmm. Secondly, we still have um, the north end of System 8 heading out towards Willow Beach. Um, at this present time, yes, we could use our reserve funds to pay for our 27% portion, but if we could utilize mm -hmm. borrowing at a lower interest rate, we're ultimately saving some money by locking it in at a lower rate for that project when we are looking at, I believe it's 2020 for a water treatment plant, which uh, there again, we will need a substantial portion if we don't get grant funding for that. I understand the logic, but once again, I'd like to repeat uh, uh, the interest on borrowing the 1.5 million and change uh, comes at a tremendous cost to our community. Uh, we're dealing with this project now, the ones that are coming in the future. Uh, would it not be better to deal with those when they come rather than speculating? And I understand more than anybody that uh, spending reserve money is a chronic and perennial and uh, mm -hmm. debatable subject in every council all over British Columbia and Canada for that matter. Uh, but in this particular case, it does make sense to me uh, because we'd have well over a million and a half, I'm just doing the arithmetic in my head, left over in the reserve. That's a pretty healthy reserve for this as well. Yeah. Um, it I'm is. actually looking for advice. I'm not no, yeah. no, and it is. Um, the real rationale of why we did that is because of the large nature of the capital projects. Um, that we have coming down the pipe. That's the only reason. But there is both options before Council, if Council wishes to utilize the reserves instead. Absolutely. Um, when it comes time to borrowing for the water treatment plant, if that was the case, we'd be able to move forward with the exact same parameters. We don't need to have elector approval because we have the order in Council under the Section 20. Um, so we're covered off that way. Um, it's just, I'm basically speculating that if the interest <coughs> rates go up, fairly significantly over the next couple of years, we'll be paying a higher higher interest rate on our debt for that 20 years rather than at the, the couple or lower interest rate. That, and again, that's just strictly speculation. So, yeah. But between this date and whatever that date is in the future, we would continue to build reserves that would offset that debt. That is always our plan, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So. so the next water project, um, the treatment plant, is in 2020, is Correct. that? So if we use the money now out of this account, we would definitely have to borrow for that one, or yes. we would probably have to borrow for that one as well. We would probably have to borrow for that one. If we didn't utilize the reserve <coughs> funds, I don't believe if we got grant funding that we would need to borrow. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. I guess my question was maybe there's a happy medium to use some of the reserve funds to save some tax dollars and borrow half or a million instead of 1.5 and use, say, half a million of our funds, I think, is a compromise or something we're talking about. Well, ultimately, yeah, you're not, yeah, ultimately, okay. um, it's not costing the taxpayers any more. Right. We're not we're increasing rates for that or taxes um, because it's the water fund. But it is, again, that's, that's a, 
an option for council. It, it's cleaner, it's easier if you go one way or the other. Mm -hmm. um, water fund's pretty pretty straightforward with respect to that. That's the nice part about it. Um, but okay. again, it, that's council's council's discretion. Yeah, no. Councillor Rhodes. Yeah, it's tricky. Um, well, so we can move forward, I'll make a, um, a motion based on the wording in number two. Okay. Yeah. And option number two. Okay. Is there I'll, second, I'll second that. You're seconding that. Any other discussion on this? Yeah, Councillor Youngberg. Uh, yes, my feeling is that um, interest rates are going up in October. It's already been announced, and um, I would really like to see us use a portion of the reserves if, in fact, we are going to use any of the reserve money, which is what the motion says, but to use all of our reserve money and then have to go to borrowing in 2020 with the actual, I mean, it's pretty obvious the interest rates are going like this to meet our consumer cost index that's rising all the time. So I, yeah, I guess I'm speaking against the motion. <clears throat> I'm, going to, uh, yeah. I'm going to speak against the motion. I, I absolutely understand where Councillor Rhodes is coming from, and I, I hate the idea of borrowing when, when we uh, can look at some other options. Um, but I also understand and, and have to have some faith in our um, in our uh, financial directors that uh, the speculation on the interest rates could be costly on the next project, and that seems to be the the, the core reason for your recommendation. Um, and uh, I, I have to have some faith in that, so I'm going to speak against the motion. Thank you, Mayor Cordoff. Um, must be something in the air. I'm losing my voice as well. <laughs> smoke. Well, mm -hmm. yeah, uh oh, you should be. have been a smoker. Yeah. Um, with regard to the interest rate and the speculation that it's going up in in October, uh, we have no way of knowing that. It's pure speculation. I would also like to address the concern that uh, the water treatment facility is. Uh, Mayor McCordoff is correct in. The, 2020, I believe. Mm -hmm. However, there will be considerable planning that goes into that, and there will also be grant opportunities that will come our way, like you indicated. There's no way in the world that we can predict what that formula is going to look like or be like. And in the meantime, in those couple of years, we will build reserves. Uh, we are not using our full reserve. I mean, I'm not sure where that came from. We're only using a portion of it and there will be lots left over, we will continue to build. And you know, world economies right now dictate that that interest rate could go down between now and then. Uh, if anybody has that crystal ball, I'd be happy to sit down with them and we can gaze into it, but I just don't, you know, I mean, there's no way of really, you know, predicting which way interest rates will go. There's as much opportunity they could go down as up. I'll, can I just say something first? I, I, I see both sides of this issue. My only concern is that in two years, we're looking at a huge uh, borrowing um, uh, problem again because we're going to have to, no matter what. So my thinking is, do we borrow now and deal with that? And then we have a little bit of in reserve. So it, it is, I can certainly see both sides of it. But Mr. Zackel, you go ahead. The other op our opportunity council has is um, with long-term borrowing. Um, over th when you borrow for 20 years, there's a 10-year window where at the end of 10 years, municipalities have the option of paying out that debt early. Okay. Um, so, you know, in hindsight, if we were in a situation where financially our reserves were um, back up in a much more comfortable position, um, after after that, we could pay off that debt early. That's an option that we have um, during those ten ten year increments. And you have to do it ten. You couldn't do it after five I, or I something like that. I believe it's after no, okay. ten. All right. Yeah. So we have a motion on the floor, and my assumption is that water councillors also uh, uh, deal with this one. So the motion is uh, Miss Van Vianen, uh, option number two that we use the. Um, we use the money from reserves totally. Okay, 
So that is it. That's option number two. All in favor? Two, three, against. So that was defeated. So is there someone who would like to make Councillor um, Campbell? I'll move that Town Council passes a resolution to support the Operational Services Department and True Consulting Limited application for grant funding in the amount of $4,232,385 for the Canada BC Investing in Canada Infrastructure Program, Green Infrastructure Environmental Quality Substream for the Rural Water Twinning of Irrigation System Number 9 with the town's portion coming from borrowing in the amount of $1,538,615. Uh, and I know I didn't have to read that whole thing out, but I just wanted to show you some love there. Thank we, you. Appreciate oh, that. We wanted you to, it's a very long to time. read it because very it was painful time. to listen to the last one. Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Anybody like to speak to that? Yeah, Sorry. I still would speak against this uh, <clears throat> motion. I still think there's an opportunity to meet in the middle somewhere. I think it's only a stroke of a pen, uh, Mr. Zackel, about saying 500,000 come out of reserves and we borrow a million odd, whatever. Uh, I still think that should be a, a real consideration before we decide to mm. pass this motion. I yep. certainly understand your point of view, Councillor King. Yes, Councillor Ro Rose. Councillor. Yeah, thank you, Madam Cordoff. Can you tell me what the overall interest will be on that loan? Just for the record. The overall interest? <laughs> and his calculator out? <laughs> yeah, I don't have a calculator with me. So basically what we're looking at is $106,650.19 annually for 20 years. So <laughs> Apparently you didn't need a calculator. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you're looking at basically um, $2, two million. At what the interest rate is? 3.21%. Uh, yeah. That was so, very rain man -esque. Yeah, $2 million. So you're looking at about 500000 in interest over a five-year a five-year term or over the 20 years. Over 20 years. Over yeah. 20 years. But if you look at it from a pretense of... Um, if we borrow two years later at 2% higher, um, well, 30000 times 20, so you're paying $600,000 more in interest in two years mm -hmm. over a 20-year period. So that question would be the reason, your answer to my question is the reason why I would speak against this. I think it's important to understand that we actually will pay that money out. Yep. And if you pay now, as in the previous... Uh, uh, motion that was defeated, uh, you would not pay that. So, <coughs> not this time. Re re responding that. to that, it, it would put great risk on uh, paying a, a heck of a lot mm. more than that oh. in interest if the speculation proves to be <coughs> true and we're borrowing at, let's say, 5.2 or 5.3 percent on a bigger dollar amount. To, to Councillor King's point, I, I have trouble agreeing with something just for the sake of a compromise to meet in the middle of something. I think. The idea here is that we know we have projects coming up. We know, as Councillor Rhodes says, we're going to continue to build the reserve. If there's an opportunity to pay this out in 10 years uh, rather than in 20, then we're saving <coughs> some significant amount. Uh, so there's some flexibility uh, to what I'm saying. So I, I'm, I'm not in favor of, of trying to negotiate a, a meet in the middle because I'm not sure I understand why we would do that. But I have to um, you know, take into account that several years down the road or a year or two down the road, that uh, the, the council today isn't looking at us in hindsight saying uh, that just cost us half a million dollars or four hundred thousand dollars because we didn't uh, look toward that speculation. So I'm, I'm comfortable with the motion. Speaking in favor of the motion, I also don't want to see our future um, uh, infrastructure developments put in jeopardy if in fact the interest rate does rise and it, and it prevents us from moving forward because our reserves haven't been built up enough as well. <coughs> okay, so the motion is option one now. Uh, I'm going to call the question. All in favor of option one? It's against. Thank you very much. That, that uh, carried. Um, so you see, Mr. Uh, Dinwoody, it's not always easy to get money from us. Um, but you seem to think. He polished his shoes today. I did. I'm going to ask for a million dollars later on. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, you just gave me one and a half, so the million will be easy. No tie. Yeah, no, no tie. tie, I know. That's going to make a difference, I think. 
<laughs> okay, the next item on our agenda is the municipal ticket information amendment bylaw, and I think that would be Ms. Van Vienna. Thank you. Fire Protection and Life Safety Bylaw number 1333 2017 was adopted by Council on June 4, 2018. An amendment to B Municipal Ticket Bylaw number 1279 is now necessary to assess fines for infractions under Bylaw number 1333. Council gave three readings to Municipal Ticket Information Amendment Bylaw number 1279.14 on July 16, 2018. It is now being presented for adoption. This bylaw amends set Schedule 1 to reflect the removal of the previous Osseous Fire Department and Regulations Bylaw Number 720 and Osseous Fire Protection Act Bylaw Number 643, which were both rescinded through Bylaw 1333. Schedule 1 now includes the new Fire Protection and Life Safety Bylaw, Bylaw 127914, also replaces Schedule 8 to assess fines to the various infractions under the new bylaw. Schedule 8 previously assessed fines for Bylaw 720, and Schedule 9 is being removed as it assessed fines under Bylaw 643. Implications to the community enforcement of a bylaw critical to the safety of the citizens, no organization or budget implications, significant dates. Currently, there is no ability to fine under this bylaw until this bylaw is adopted, and therefore, any infractions would have to be dealt with through the court system under the Offense Act. Sustainability to ensure the enforceability of town bylaws. Options, one, that Municipal Ticket Information Amendment Bylaw number 1279.14 be adopted, two, that it be sent back to staff for further review, or three, that it be abandoned and staff recommend option one. Thank you very much. We've been through this before. Councillor uh, Rhodes. Thank you, Madam Clark. I'll move the recommended option number one. Thank you. Councillor Youngberg seconding that. I think um, we've, we've uh, dealt with this before, so this is just uh, the adoption part of it. We've been through the first readings. All in favor? Thank you very much. That's passed. Um, next is the Report 3 Zoning Amendment Bylaw. Ms. Sona. Thank you. So, background. During the July 3rd special open meeting, Council gave third reading to Amendment Bylaw number 1085.106 for the purpose of adding one dwelling unit or a manufacturer home for the owner or caretaker with a maximum floor area of 100 square meters as a permitted use in the M1 General Industrial Zone for a property located in the Buena Vista Industrial Park. Overview. The site-specific zoning amendment will allow for a dwelling unit, i.e. a small house, or a manufacturer home on foundation in the rear portion of Lot C, District Lot 2450, SDYD Plan KAP 78807, as shown in Attachment 3. The property is associated with a plumbing and eating business that does not have a caretaker unit within the industrial building. Council read the amendment bylaw for first and second time on June 18, 2018, and set the public hearing date for July 3, 2018. Subsequent to receiving third reading, the bylaw was forwarded to the Ministry of Transportation Infrastructure for approval pursuant to Section 53.3a of the Transportation Act. There are no other conditions associated with bylaw approval. The Ministry approved amending bylaw on July 11, 2018. Accordingly, staff are now bringing the bylaw forward for council approval and final adoption. Application for the community, a public hearing was held on July 3, 2018. The proposal meets the official community plan objective and community goal of compact urban form. Organizational, if the bylaw amendment is adopted, the applicant will be submitting a building permit application. There is no budget implication. Significant dates. The applicant indicated their intention to have the dwelling unit or manufacture home bill as soon as possible. And sustainability. The proposal supports the town's economic sustainability and smart growth principle by allowing an owner caretaker to reside near the workplace and ensure structurally sound, safe and healthy building. Options. One, that council adopt zoning amendment bylaw number 1085.106-2018. Number two, council abandons the bylaw and staff recommend option one. Thank you very much. 
Councillor uh, Campbell. Thank you, Mayor McCordoff. I move that Council adopt zoning amendment bylaw number 1085.106 2018. Thank you. Councillor King, you re can you do that? Yeah. Um, okay. Um, then all in favor? I got a caution, though. Question before you vote? Pardon me? I have a question before you oh, vote. So go ahead. I guess it's just looking at the map here on the last page, the location of this bill, I'm not against the, the idea of putting the bill in there. But I don't know if you're aware of the slant of that property is about a 30 degree angle and I guess they'll be looking at retain walls and stuff to protect the person above them yes that will be dealt with the building permit application okay, okay thank you okay thank you so I'll go back and ask uh, all in favor of this motion thank you very much um, next is the uh, zoning amendment by law um, miss McKay Thank you, Mayor McCordoff. So this report has been prepared in consideration of zoning amendment bylaw number 1085.107, and it has to do with lot one at the airport. The owner, current owner is the town of Asturias. The applicant is J.F. Laurier, who is in the building with us today. Uh, the civic address for the property is 32 Empire Street. Um, the existing um, OCP designation is industrial. It's currently zoned M1 or general industrial under state specific zoning, um, just for those seven lots. Um, the proposed zoning is actually a comprehensive development zone, which will come to CD number 10 to allow for a mix of restricted general, general industrial uses with accessory residential above. So the purpose of this report is to request that Council consider zoning bylaw amendment number 1085.107, which is attached to your report. Um, the property situated at the airport industrial park is shown on attachment number two. Property is currently owned by the town of Soyuz and is zoned M1. The property, along with the adjoining M1 lots on Empire Street, have a site-specific zoning which has limited, limited the M1 uses to those which are more compatible with the Jeepson airport use. In order to accommodate the proposed use of this property, which is a mixed industrial residential use, the property will require rezoning. Subject properties adjacent to lands within the agricultural land reserve. The design and setting of the buildings has taken this into account, and this issue is discussed later in the report. So the applicant is applying to rezone the subject property to allow for the construction of a seven-unit general industrial building. The intent is to have one residential unit above each of the strata industrial units. According to the applicant, the live work units will provide space, services, mentorship, and support to assist new and growing businesses to become established and profitable. The intent is to have the owner and or operator of the business to live in the units while the business is in the startup phase. The Section 219 the Restrictive Covenant will be registered on title to ensure that the property is not used for temporary accommodation for the traveling public, in other words, for tourist use or Airbnb. A comprehensive development zone is being proposed in order to accommodate an appropriate mix of residential and general industrial uses and to allow for one residential use within each of the strata units. The following uses are considered to be su su suitable for this site and the intended use of the property to provide for a live-work opportunity for startup businesses. Those are manufacturing, finishing and packaging, cartage delivery express facility, welding, fabricating machine and blacksmith shop, aircraft related uses, workshops for general contractors and trade contractors, indoor automotive repair and restoration, and one residential suite for the use of the owner, operator, or employee with a minimum, maximum floor of 1,000 square meters per strata title unit. So um, with respect to OCP policies, um, as per the industrial policies in the OCP, the objective of the town's industrial designation is to expand and diversify the industrial base to provide sustainable and quality jobs and to take advantage of any unique economic opportunities that may offer themselves in the future. The use, is, the use, the, pardon me, the use of the subject property for a live-work arrangement that would allow for startup businesses to locate in town can be considered a unique economic opportunity. This arrangement, in light of the housing shortage, will provide an arrangement that helps new businesses establish themselves in the community. Uh, the proposed development is adjacent to property which is in with the Agricultural Land Reserve. Town objectives, as outlined in the OCP, include minimizing conflicts between adjoining urban developments and farming opportunities. Taking this into consideration, the site has been designed to minimize any potential conflicts as follows. 
by prohibiting any vehicle access or storage at the rear or north end of the building, by limiting the use at the rear of the building to residential only, that is the balconies, and ensuring a six meter setback to the north property line is sustained through the use of a comprehensive development zone. The subject property abuts the town of Asus Canal Trail. The trail corridor is three meters wide, so the trail trail corridor in combination with the six meter setback to the building results in a total setback of nine meters. Planning staff are of the opinion that this set setback coupled with the restricted uses on the property will ensure that the objectives of the OCP are met. The development of industrial designated properties are subject to compliance with the industrial development permit area guidelines. The applicant will be required to comply with those guidelines and submit a completed DP application and associated fees for staff's review. So we've attached some preliminary drawings for council's re review. Um, the strata subdivision is going to be required and that, that strata subdivision will allow each of the individual industrial bays to be sold as a separate independent unit. In order to complete the strata subdivision, the applicant will be required to submit an appropriate subdivision and servicing plans. Issuance of the development permit will be subject to submission of the requirements of the strata subdivision proposal to ensure that the development permit plan is consistent with the strata subdivision plan. Approval of the subdivision will be contingent on the submission of any fees associated with the servicing of the lot and any off-site costs that may be required to upgrade municipal services to accommodate those uses. So the rationale for the recommendation is the proposed rezoning will allow for seven new business startup opportunities in the community. Implications, the proposal meets the objectives of the community goals, compact urban form that avoids sprawl and include a diversity of housing types, densities and locations to accommodate different lifestyles, affordability and needs. The rezoning process requires a public hearing. There's no impact to the budget associated with this report. Public hearing will be required and staff are proposing a public hearing be held on September 4th at 4 p.m. Um, by providing opportunities in the general industrial service and um, sectors, it's an economic development goal in the OCP and our options today before Council are that, number one, Council grants first and second reading to zoning amendment bylaw number 1085.107 and sets a public hearing date Tuesday, September 4th at 4 p.m. Option two, Council rejects the zoning amendment bylaw. Count, and option three, Council requests additional information. Option four, Council recommends any other action deemed appropriate at this time. And staff are recommending option number one, that Council grants first and second reading to zoning amendment bylaw number 1085.107 and sets a public hearing date of Tuesday, September 4th. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I appreciate <coughs> having the... Um, uh, the the map and the and the pictures showing what uh, ideally it's going to to um, to look like for sure looks like it'll fit in very nicely. Councillor Campbell. Thank you, Mayor McCorda. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> Councillor Campbell always has his hand up, ready to speak halfway through this. So it's all right. We know what you're like. <laughs> Go ahead. So. Um, <laughs> Just for the record, uh, uh, spelling and pronunciation of the applicant's name, uh, Lanye, L-A-U-N-I-E-R. Yes, you have an R in the middle. Did I it's say? An N. <laughs> oh, sorry, Jeff. I guess it's just because I always just say J-F. <laughs> um, you know, I, I, I always, I, I'm always impressed to see um, residents take initiative to create uh, business opportunities, and in this case, in a, a rather unique and creative way, um, for people to come in and be able to do low-risk startups uh, while moving to a community where we know um, uh, house rentals uh, can be quite challenging, especially for an individual uh, as far as affordability or even finding uh, year-round rentals. So I, I definitely like the creativity and the, and the initiative set forth. Mm -hmm. And based on that, I'm going to move option number one. Thank you. I'll Councillor Youngberg, I'll you're second. seconding that. I'll speak to it. Absolutely. Uh, yes, uh, Director McKay, thanks very much for uh, submitting this and to JF. It's uh, something in that this community is long needed and from downtown perspective we have continual requests for industrial use where they can actually live and, and uh, contribute to the business as it's developing. So it's uh, kudos in every respect and hopefully this will be well received. 
Th can I ask a question? Was there a time limit on living? It's mainly for a startup, and presumably, if they get going, they would they would move to something. I'll have to get ask Miss McKay first. Thanks. I just wondered if that was part of it, or is there not a time limit on when how well, long you can live there? Thank you. That's a good question. I mean, we can't we can't regulate that. Okay. Somebody owns the building. They own the residential unit. The intent is for that person or a person that works for that company to live in there. But we can't restrict. And we and we can't. So if, if the the original plan was to up for like a startup company, and once it sort of gets going, that you would then sell your and move into something else. But maybe that doesn't happen. Well, I think it's conceivable think to think that once they outgrow that, they would move on. Okay. But yes, and, and that's that's a possibility. I just I wasn't sure whether there was a time limit on it. And I'm sure there will be a strata council regulated, uh, regulating the use of those buildings once all of the units have been sold. Correct? Yes, yeah. it's mm -hmm. a strata proposal. So. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Right. Mr. Romanko, did you want? I think uh, the the long term goal here is staff accommodation in town. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, if the uh, if the owner of the property is fortunate enough to, to be able to find accommodation for all the staff. I'm sure there's this flexibility that it, it be can can become staff accommodation in the community. Mm -hmm. uh, the big the big issue that uh, we are facing and will be de it will be covered through covenant will in fact be the uh, the uh, rental of uh, you know nightly rental or B and B Airbnb type of concept, which uh, uh, again will be addressed in uh, it will be addressed in zoning and I'm sure it'll be addressed in strata mm -hmm. rules okay. as well. That's okay, yeah. good, thank you. So it was mm, moved and seconded? Okay. Yes, moved and seconded to go with. And do you wish to have both of those on the same motion or with the? It doesn't really matter. It doesn't. We uh, can do it all together. Yeah. Uh, it was the. My, mo my motion was the exact wording and option yeah. one. Uh, sometimes they ask us to separate those, but that's okay. So it's option number one and all in favor. Thank you very much. Can I? Yes. Thank you, Mayor McCordoff. I just have one question for staff about if it's possible to uh, resolve into a regular meeting of council after a special meeting, if we want to consider third reading. Yes. Okay. That's all. If, all, if, all if all goes well. If all council are here. Yes, I understand that. Okay. Thank you. Uh, on the fourth. Yeah, that's correct. On the fourth. Mm -hmm. if, oh. if not, you can post it. And if uh, you don't have it, then you can just open the meeting and close the meeting. Yes, thank you. That's what I was yes. thinking. Okay. So we'll go on to um, biz our business uh, number four, destination marketing agreement. And who's doing that one? Mr. Zackel? Yes. Thank you, Mayor McCordoff. So this um, next one is destination marketing agreement 2018 to 2022. The Town of Osseous is authorized under Hotel Room Tax Act and the Town of Osseous Municipal Rural District Tax Bylaw Number 1327-2017 to collect a hotel room tax under provincial legislation. The Town is authorized to identify a destination market marketing organization to carry out program development and administration of the collected revenue. The taxes are collected by the local accommodators and transferred to the province. The province forwards these funds to the town for program in implementation. Destination Osseous is identified as the town's destination marketing organization and administered by destination by a destination marketing agreement that ended in 2017. The attached agreement is a new five-year agreement that provides Destination Osseous with the status of the town's designated destination marketing organization and responsibilities of developing and delivering a destination marketing program that utilizes the MRDT um, funds. In 2017, the town received $431,110.71. Implications for community. The community benefits from having an industry-based organization develop and deliver locally funded destination marketing program. Organizationally, the town is influenced in the destination marketing program through, pr through program and budget approvals and council communication at the board level. 
budget. Destination Osius receives approximately 430000 a year for marketing from the MRDT program. Significant dates, the agreement would be for the 2018 to 2022 calendar years. Sustainability, the agreement contributes to economic sustainability. And options before Council, option one, approve the agreement as presented and signed off by Destination Osius. Option two, seek an additional information prior to the decision. Option three, make a decision not to approve the agreement as presented and make an additional recommendation for inclusion into the agreement. And staff's recommendation is option number one. Thank you very much. Council, anybody like to make a recommendation here? Thank you very much. I just have a question. Uh, um, it's been a while since we've had any reporting back on, on uh, how this funding is used. I'm wondering if there's any thing in the near future that might give us some guidance in that area. The uh, Destination of Services, uh, uh, annually they now have to uh, provide an annual report on this funds. Uh, we received that annual report, but I, I haven't distributed it to Council. If uh, if you wish, I can make a request to Destination Associates to uh, to uh, come to Council and uh, provide an overview of the uh, uh, of their annual report from 2016. I, I, I know they've changed their AGM to the fall, so maybe it would be prudent to wait till after this year's AGM and then yeah. get an update. Oh. I know I've been in contact with the, the executive director, and she did mention that it, she had an intention of uh, coming to council in the very near future to provide an overview of, of their activities. So I'll, I'll ensure that uh, the uh, it, it report is included in terms of the MRDT program as well. I think that was a good idea because uh, they've moved to a new location, and there could be some... Um, some different things that need to be reported on. So, yeah, go ahead, Councillor Rhodes. Um, well, we're being asked to make a pretty profound decision here, and uh, um, I think it would be cautious and prudent of us to have that information prior to making this decision. Is this a time-sensitive uh, matter that we're being asked about? Um, it's something that we want to get in place, um, absolutely. Um, but if Council's wishes to receive inf or additional information, that was one of the options um, before Council. Um, hmm. Yeah, an awful lot can happen in a year, and it would be comforting to know that everything is all right and moving forward uh, prior to making this decision. Because once we resolve and if we pass this, then it's done. And there are clauses in the agreement uh, that gives them the municipality and destination of CS the opportunity to to pull the pull from the agreement. So if they're not um, meeting their expectations, town council has the opportunity to to remove that contract. So we do have those provisions in there to protect the town. Okay, um, yeah. Councillor Campbell. Yeah, it, w it would be rare to see a presentation at this time of year as. Uh, Zio is right in the thick of it right now, and reporting would mostly, uh, most likely be in the fall. Um, having said that, though, we do have a, a council liaison um, that attends uh, the DO meetings, correct? Yeah, they had a meeting in two months. They took the summer off. So I was wondering if we could rely on some of the insight uh, from our liaison to know if there's been any major challenges or significant differences to, to budget or spending that, that should concern us? So well, I would say there'd be no concerns. They set a new new strategy back at the start of the year where they wanted to spend their marketing dollars, and I, I believe they're hitting their targets, absolutely. So when is the AGM? November, I believe they okay. changed it too. Because it used so to be in the spring, didn't it? Yeah, no, yeah. they changed yeah. it for sure. Can yes. I ask a question? So DO has not given us any information from 2017 of how the um, funds are spent? They, they provide annual reports to the province um, right. with I've respect to the destination mm -hmm. marketing. Um, I believe that report... Yes, we, yeah, we, we've received copies of those reports. Yes. Actually, we have to sign them off. Yeah. Okay. Right, uh, so we just haven't received a copy is what you're saying. The council hasn't received the... the 
the annual uh, reporting of, of uh, all right. the expenditures of their 2017 funds. Mm -hmm. So is yeah. that possible? Can sure. You forward I can, that to I us? can provide you a copy of that report. Would, mm -hmm. would it be a significant challenge if we move this to the next council meeting, having been able to review that no. information? No. Mm -hmm. Not at all. Mm -hmm. Do you need a motion for that, or can we? I, I, I would suggest a motion of that nature. So I would uh, move to have administration uh, send that information out to mayor and council and bring this item back uh, for the next regular meeting. Yeah, I'll second that. Okay. Thank you. All in favor? Thank you. And I do think that at some point it would be nice to have them come to council, but maybe we'll deal with this first and uh, and sometime in the next month or two they could come and make a presentation. We, you're right. We haven't seen them for a while. Yeah, not a problem. <clears throat> okay. Thank you. Um, okay. My right page here. Mr. Zackel, you're going to tell us about the June income statements from the town and the Sun Bowl Arena. Thank you. So the income statements to June 2018 are presented to Council um, for the Town of Osvius and Sun Bowl Arena. The accounts to June 30th have been reviewed and are accurately reflected in the attached document. Um, highlights of the Town of Osvius income statement. Our general fund is projecting to have a surplus of $81,700. Uh, we look at our taxes on uh, real property levy, though that's on budget. Taxes collected for other governments is on budget. Taxes collected from utilities, we've got a small surplus of $300. Cemetery operations, revenues are on par with um, what we received in 2017. That's projected to be on budget. Uh, licenses, permits, and rentals, we've got a projected budget of $11,400. Um, business licenses um, are, are up from last year as well as the Fortis franchise fee. Um, solid waste management, um, our revenues are $47,300 higher than this time last year, um, but still I'm projecting that to be on budget at this time. Uh, good news story, development and build, building services, uh, current surplus of $33,400. Uh, building development um, has increased significantly in 2018 and I'm projecting a surplus of 30000 We haven't had that for a number of years. Uh, returns on investment, we've got a current surplus of $26,980, and I'm projecting a surplus right now of 40000 on this. Donations um, projected to be on budget. Land and equipment sales. Land sales, um, as of June 30th, um, we had $662,500, and these proceeds are being transferred to reserves as per Council's resolution for future land purchases. So this, this uh, field is actually on budget, it just looks like it's significantly over. Um, I believe as of the end of um, August here, or in August, just this last week, uh, we've now sold all of our lots at the Metal Arc subdivision. So all those funds have been received and as well, those are transferred into that reserve account. So I believe it's a little over $1 million now. Um, under community services facility rental, um, current surplus of 13000 um, This is projected to be on budget. Community services for program revenue. Uh, we've got the RDOS recreation grant of 71000 which we will receive in August. And this is projected to be on budget. Um, we've got our unconditional transfers from government, conditional transfers from government and borrowing and transfer of other funds, and these are all tied to capital projects. Under general operating expenditures, our general government services is over budget by $28,790, um, but will be on budget um, by the end of the year. Under protective services, under budget by $355,900, um, and this is mainly due to our CMBP billings. Um, they come out on a quarterly basis. Um, this is projected to be on budget. Transportation services, under budget by $29,600, as well on budget. Environmental health under budget by 20,900. Uh, public health under budget by 6,400. Community services under budget by 39,000. Parks and cultural <laughs> under budget by 83,000. Um, we've got South Okanagan emergency preparedness, which is right on budget. Transfers of taxes, debts, and reserves. Uh, tax, rec tax requisitions get paid in late July, so this is on budget. It's our transfers to all the other governments. Under capital expenditures, uh, we're projecting um, most of the capital projects to be on budget. Under our sewer fund, uh, we've got a projected surplus of $262,225. Um, 
the main um, increase of this is $190,320 that we received from the reflection point for their sewer capital charges. Um, I'm projecting a, a total surplus of $230,000 for this, um, this, this portion. Under operating, we've got a current surplus of 85700 which I'm projecting on budget. Debt charges, we've got a projected budget of $8,225, and this is due to our um, MFA loan being paid out early, um, bylaw 953. Capital expenditures is on budget. Um, most of the projects are be moving forward, forward fairly well. Under water fund, we've got a projected surplus of $10,100. And this is coming from additional wa uh, water utility revenues um, from town, town's water. Under water district expenditures, um, we're under budget currently of $136,800. Water operating is over budget by $58,400, but both of these are projected to be on budget by the end of the year. Debt charges and capital expenditures as well on budget. Under the Sunbowl Arena income statement, revenues of $99,205 or $18,550 higher than 2017 at this time, and their revenues are projected to be on budget. As well as expenses of $321,954.75, or $30,664.58 higher than 2017 at this time. We had um, an emergency repair that happened at the arena um, when the arena was shut down and uh, be in maintenance to, to, to come back up. And um, those additional costs are being covered through a resolution from the RDOS to, to utilize additional reserves to, to pay for that $30,000 shortfall. Um, we've got a current deficit of $222,700 uh, for the Sun Bowl Arena, but we received the tax requisition for the, the funding in August. Um, so you'll see that back into a surplus position. Um, so ultimately, the Sun Bowl Arena budget is projected to be on budget. So um, this is basically for discussion, uh, recommendation for council to receive the June 30th income statements for the Town of Osseus and Sun Bowl Arena. So it just floors me that Mr. Zackel can look at all these numbers, figure out how far off we are, and they're on budget, and, and he's right. That's the trouble. He's right every time. It's not a problem. We <laughs> certainly appreciate I'm it, Mr. Right a problem. But he just seems to come up with these numbers, and they all fit. And so we thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> are you are you suggesting that there are problems sometimes? No. When, when the numbers all come together, that's not a problem. No, no. <laughs> I, I I agree. <laughs> thank you. Did anybody have any? Questions about this? Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he just seems to Can be like a magician a a pulling a rabbit out of a hat. We need a motion to receive this? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I'll make that motion. Thank you. Moved and seconded. Thank you. One, two. All in favor. Thank you very much, you. Mr. Zackel. So maybe that getting up at early in the morning going fishing is good for you. <laughs> <laughs> Um, next is, uh, uh oh, <laughs> I think we're in trouble. Mr. Dinwoody. Thank you, <laughs> um, So, uh, this is for the contract award of Highway Number 3 Storm Sewer. Uh, so, likely as a result of climate change, the town is experiencing short duration, high intensity rainfall events more often. This project is the next phase of the Highway No. 3 Storm Sewer Improvement Project, which began in April of this year. It should be noted that the Ministry of Transportation and Infrastructure has agreed to pay approximately 80% of this project since most of the stormwater collects runoff off of Highway No. 3. Uh, this project comprises the following works in approximate quantities, 320 meters of 600 millimeter PVC storm sewer, 140 meters of 250 to 450 millimeter PVC storm sewer, Five precast concrete manholes, 1,200 to 1,500 millimeters in diameter. Fourteen side inlet and standard catch basins. Traffic calming intersection improvements complete with curb and gutter and crosswalks. 2,900 square meters of asphalt trench repair on Highway Number 3. Miscellaneous traffic markings and pro boulevard repairs. Y please see the attached report from True Consulting for a more detailed cost analysis of the bids received for this project. 
Uh, the bid price submitted by H&M Excavating without the $70,000 contingency sum allowance is $28,576.25, or 2.8% below the approved capital budget for this project. During the construction of the first phase of this Highway Number 3 storm sewer project, H&M Excavating utilized only 19.6% of the contract's contingency sum. As a result of the excellent work H&M Excavating has performed for the Town of Osoyoos in previous contracts, uh, which was the Highway 3 storm sewer Phase 1 and 62nd Avenue road reconstruction, we believe that they will be able to complete this contract utilizing less than 40% of the allocated contingency sum allowance, thus remaining within budget. Originally, the Town of Osoyoos uh, was expecting to receive only $642,000 contribution to this project from MOTI. Uh, MOTI has now allocated $822,000 to this project, thus freeing up about $180,000 to cover any potential budget over expenditures. It should be noted that the Ministry of Transportation and Infrastructure's $822,000 contribution to this project must be allocated before March 31, 2019. The MOT contribution to this project will pay for the installation of the new storm sewer and road rehabilitation, while the Town of Soyuz contribution will, will be allocated to the construction of the curb bump outs at 87th and 89th Street. Implications for the community are reduced risk of property damage caused by flooding from extreme rainfall events, organizationally reduced road repairs caused by flooding events on Main Street, uh, for the budget, the bid price for this project submitted by H&M Excavating Limited without the contingency sum allowance and GST is $28,576.25 or 2.8% below the approved capital budget for this project. Based on the past performance, we believe that H&M Excavating will be able to complete this project utilizing less than 40% of the contingency sum allowance and therefore remain in budget. If unexpected problems arise during the construction process, the addition funds will be taken from unallocated road repair funds from the Town of Osoyoos as described above. Uh, significant dates in order for the selected contractor to begin work on September 4th, 2018. It is recommended that Town Council award this project as soon as possible. Sustainability, there will be improved stormwater management. The options before Council are Town Council awards the contract for Highway Number 3 Storm Interceptor, 85 to 89th Street, to H&M Excavating Limited for $1,069,923.75, contingency and taxes included. Option number two is the Town Council awards the, awards the contract for Highway Number 3 Storm Interceptor, 85 to 89th Street, to one of the other two contractors who submitted bids on this project. Our option number three is that Town Council requests additional information prior to making a decision. And the recommendation of administration is Town Council adopt option number one. Thank you. Councillor Rhodes. Uh, thank you, Mayor McCord. I'll follow up, move uh, the recommended option number one. Seconded over here. Um, can I ask, you say that there were, um, there was another contractor. Two other bids. Two other bids. Were they considerably higher? They were yeah. higher. Yeah. They were both higher. Right. One was considerably higher. So one was a lot I higher. A uh, couple hundred thousand. A couple hundred thousand. The other one was very, very close. Uh, it was within oh, $3,000. Okay. And um, can you tell me is the, uh, if, it's, if it's ready to start on September the 4th, presumably, mm -hmm. um, at how long do you expect this to take? It should be completed by the end of October. Okay, so two months. About that. Yeah. Okay. And H&M is in town now, and they're waiting to go on this project. Okay. Um, Just a question. Yeah. Are they the ones that did 62nd? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And I look, it looks to be like they're paving today. They are paving today. They should be finished by tomorrow. Good. Yes. Well, since we have the opportunity, um, any speculation on the generosity of our highways department? Um, totally out of character for them. <laughs> uh, why they did this? Um, um, I'm not sure why they decided to do this. I think they realized that it, most of the rainwater comes from their highway. Uh, it is their storm sewer. It is their road. It is their storm sewer that had failed, so I think they felt a certain obligation to repair what was broken. Now, and it failed because, it, you know, it is 40 years old, so it's about time for it to fail. So. Okay. okay. Does that cover the $200,000 bump in it? Uh, I don't know why they decided <laughs> to give us more money, but they did. We will yeah. certainly take the money and run. Um, yeah, of course. Yeah. We are going to ask them for more money next year as well because we'd like to continue this project all the way up mm -hmm. the hill. 
to essentially the entrance to the little shopping center up there. That would be ideal. So we'll see if they're still generous next year or not. Okay. Is it you that they deal with, you personally? Uh, well, well we, they deal with, I'm at one of the contacts for them, yes. I'm, but then I'm, we ju I'm just wondering if they know his ability to come and ask for money for things, and maybe they've just decided to. <laughs> to or just get it. money from them, too. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Okay, so have we got moved? You've moved and seconded, but not voted. Yes, okay. All in favor of option one. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, and yeah. next is, um, oh, Mr. Right. Dinwiddie, you again. Right. This is the okay. San uh, Sanitary Landfill. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, there, are, <coughs> there are a few areas of unsurveyed crown land in the vicinity of the Soya Sanitary Landfill. One parcel is to the east is described as unsurveyed crown land LAR75 which the Town of Osoyas would like to secure for future reclaimed water irrigation purposes. In 2012, staff investigated the possibility of the Town securing this property for future reclaimed water irrigation. In speaking with Front Counter BC, it has been determined that the Town can indeed apply for tenure over this piece of Crown land, going through the nominal rent tenure or NRT process under the Community and Institutional Use Crown Land Program. The town is in need of securing this property for the purposes of spray irrigation and infiltration and or basin and or storage reservoir. In particular, if future development was to occur in the Willow Beach area, this is the site where the developer's sanitary sewer would be processed. Uh, note, to the northeast of Land Act Reserve, or LAR 75, lies LAR 68.6, which is also an unsurveyed crown land and has a Section 16 designation. Section 16 map for reserve is a protection tool used by the land officers to protect parcels of land having significant features or high habitat values. The notation of interest on, on this is in favor of water, land, and air protection, environmental stewardship division for conservation wildlife purposes. The recommendation also prevents, presents environmental value as a north, south, and east-west corridor between the ecological reserve and the desert center. The implications for the community are that land becomes available for future spray irrigation, infiltration basin, and or storage reservoir for excess effluent. Organizationally, an increase in maintenance tasks for the operational services department water and sewer operators. There are no budget implications. Uh, significant dates in order to proceed with the town's application for a nominal rent tenure for unsurveyed crown lands referred to as LAR 75 in a timely manner. Town Council should pass a resolution of support as soon as possible. Sustainability, this will ensure that there is sufficient capacity available for effluent storage and future expansion of the town's sanitary sewer system. Uh, the options before Council are that staff be directed to proceed with the application form for a nominal rent tenure for unsurveyed Crown land referred to as LAR 75. Option number two is that Council request additional information prior to making a decision and administration recommends option number one. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. uh, Councillor Youngberg. Yes, Councillor Dinwiddie, I think this has been in the works for a while, hasn't it? <laughs> it has, yes. For yes. quite some time. It's just something that fell off the table for a while. Yes, that's right, right. I'd like to make the motion that um, we direct your um, directorship to proceed with the application form for the nominal rent tenure for the unsurveyed crown land referred to as LER 75. Thank you. I think we need this. Thank you. Seconded by Councillor King. Did anyone else need to speak to it? No? All in favor. Thank you very much. Um, next is the um, Mr. Davis, Isui's Portuguese Canadian Cultural Society lease. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Staff pre presented the Isui's Portuguese Canadian Cultural Society lease <coughs> on June 4th, 2018, and was directed to bring it back to a public meeting. At the June 4th meeting of Council, staff was directed to include a clause in the lease that relates to the use of the kitchen. If the kitchen is to be used for public events, it will need to be inspected and maintained to the standards put forth by Interior Health Authority. Staff has added this clause and also advertised the lease in two consecutive issues of the Asuyas Times, thus fulfilling the requirements for the community charter. In terms of implications for the community, the society is open to all people of the Soyuz. They also support the community with fundraisers and high school bursaries. Organizational, correspondence and lease development, significant dates, 
ASAP. The current lease is expired, but there is a clause allowing a month-to-month -month continuation and sustainability. The society has been part of the community for over 30 years and the relationship with the town has promoted an opportunity for unique cultural experience, which promotes a sustainable and historical component for the community. The options for council, option one, that the attached five-year lease be approved. Option two, that the lease terms be modified. Or option three, that the town no longer lease these lands to the Asoyas Portuguese Canadian Cultural Society. And the recommendation is number one. The Asoyas Portuguese Cultural Canadian Cultural Society would like to continue with the lease agreement and try to get more youth involved in society. Their goal is to increase their membership and continue to support the community. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Youngberg? Uh, yes, Director Davis. Is the um, clause in the lease to improve the kitchen to the um, standards of Interior Health Authority got a time frame on it that they are to bring it up to date and complete it within a certain period of time? There's no time frame on it, only if they use it as such. Okay, so if it's for public use? That is correct. And you know I'm speaking in defense of Desert Park, who yeah. uses that kitchen, and we have not been able to use it for two years because the kitchen doesn't uh, meet the standards of inspection. And so I use that word, we, freely, but that comes out of Desert Park's meetings. So I just was wondering how we're going to get around that if, in fact, we can, uh, Desert Park can use the, the kitchen. I guess that would be up to the, uh, the society themselves in terms of the kitchen uh, for its use. But if they don't have the kitchen up to the standards that Interior Health requires, then they won't be able to use it for anybody. Right. So part of the lease is, is that it is to be used by the public so how can the public use it if it's not up to standards it has to be up to standards right so who's yeah. going to make sure it does get up to standards we will the town <laughs> okay because they have to sign it right that they agree to yeah. this that's yeah. correct because no. they use it constantly uh, and that's great but that is right. if you were to use it for public use it's not going to pass yeah they don't have they don't have a lot of uh groups that use it or they do fundraisers for anymore mm -hmm. so the majority of what they use the kitchen for is when they do their meetings mm -hmm. um, so they don't sell the food there it's for their members um, and if they do decide as per uh, section t uh, they have to have the kitchen inspected by Interior Health if they're going to sell food or do fundraisers for that purpose. Okay. Go ahead, Mr. Manko. My understanding is that it's the, the soci Portuguese society's choice as to whether or not they sublease the kitchen to any other active group. So uh, if they choose n not to bring up the kitchen up to, standar up to standards, uh, Yes, it won't be available for any other group to use. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, again, that's that's their choice because that's it, that their property is leased to them, and if they don't want anybody else to use their kitchen, they just won't bring it up to standards. But if it that, but if it is used, uh, the the clause is put in there to protect the town. That in fact, if the kitchen is used uh, for public use, that then it has to be brought up to standard. Right. There so, was no direction for them to bring it up to standard. Okay, because I just, it, if the kitchen is to be used for public events, they need to have it inspected. That's yeah. right. That's just where I was coming from, is yeah. who's going to do the inspection, who's going to ask them to bring it up. It's their decision, is what you're saying? Well, yes. if, if the, the inspection will be done by Interior Health, mm -hmm. but whether or not their kitchen is brought up to standard, is we up to the Portuguese society to decide whether or not they want to sublease their kitchen? Okay. okay. Uh, Councillor Rhodes, next. Uh, I'll make a motion uh, based on uh, option number one, the recommended option. Thank you. Are you seconding that? Yeah. Anybody else need to speak? Councillor King? Are you kind of telling me interior, they don't need a permit interior health even if they're making hamburgers for themselves? Correct. That's right. That's, mm. right. That's like getting, it, it would be like a private. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> yeah. It's their own building. So I, I really want to relook at that contract then because there could be potential other users. And you're telling me right now they say no one can use it, case closed. But that's their choice. That's their choice. The building is leased to them. Okay. 
But what if one of them then it got say sick? Too, please. Then what? That's their issue. That's their That's issue. Their issue? Yeah. Okay. It, it does seem unusual to have it that way. I would have expected because it's not a private home, no, it's, it's, a, it's a, a building used by many people who just happen to be members of the society. Mm -hmm. well, the building is leased to the society. Once, once you lease the building to the society, you don't... It becomes their home, in other words. Okay, so can't say. All right, got it. The confusion I came, came up with was if the kitchen is to be used for public events. Yeah, and okay. obviously that's the, yeah. what we and put in there. And it has been, so yeah. I just... Yeah, okay. okay. All right, so... Uh, uh, yes, yeah. go ahead. Do we know exactly what would have to be done to bring it up? What's missing? Have we had any idea? No. We have, we have a report. Desert okay. Park has a report from them. Let's, they the, gave it let's to let us. Desert Park and them deal with that. And this is yeah, no, that's yeah. right. Nothing there, there's nothing the, wrong, uh, Councillor Campbell, for sure. That's what will be done. But so, I had to clear. Yeah, clear. So the community so services aren't involved. So, so the okay. option uh, is that the five year lease be approved. Option one. All in favor? Thank you very much. And um, Mr. Davis, it's you again. Mrs. D's Play School Lease Renewal. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, Mrs. D's Play School has a lease at the Sonora Community Center and will expire at the end of September of this year. As part of the lease, there is an option to renew for a two-year period. To fulfill the requirements of the new lease, we will need to advertise in a newspaper for two consecutive weeks and create a lease modification agreement. The play school has been open since September of 2017. It is well maintained and is a great addition in the Sonora Community Center. It has worked well for both the town and the school. The lease has a renewal clause that will extend the lease for a two year term. This renewal is also subject to a CPI consumer price index increase each year. The current fee is set at $500 a month and does not include the summer months of July and August. In terms of implications for the community, providing a play school space is a great offering to the community. Having it in a Soyuz for a Soyuz parents is essential. The organizational development of the lease, the budget is $500 a month plus CPI. Significant dates, the current lease expires in September of this year and no sustainability implications. The options before council. Number one, for council to renew the lease modification agreement with Mrs. D's Play School for an additional two years with a CPI increase each year subject to advertising in the local paper for two consecutive weeks. Option two, for council to renew the lease with Mrs. D's Play School for an additional two years with no CPI increase each year subject to advertising in the local paper for two consecutive weeks. Option three, for council to renew the lease for a longer term subject to advertising in the local paper for two consecutive weeks and option four for council not to renew, renew the lease at this time and the recommendation is number one having a place to go at the Sonora community center has been exceptional the room is maintained and kept clean on a regular basis it has not interfered with any of our regular program and seems to be doing well Thank you very much. And um, if you're happy with it, so um, you're okay yeah. with suggesting that. Uh, Councillor Campbell? Thank you. I'll move option one. And I'll second. Thank you. All in favor? Thank you very much. Um, and next we have a Mr. Dinwiddie, a grant application. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, the Municipal Asset Management Program is a five-year, $50 million program designed to help municipalities make informed decisions about infrastructure investment based on stronger asset management practices. The program offers grant funding as well as training and capacity building activities to increase skills within municipalities to sustainably maintain their asset management programs now and in the future. The program is delivered by the Federation of Canadian Municipalities, or FCM, and funded by the Government of Canada. In 2017, a video inspection of the storm sewer system under Main Street be between 89th Street and Park Place revealed the complete failure of these pipes. Without this video inspection, the town of Ensoyos would continue to be unaware of this potentially dangerous situation. This particular problem was successfully repaired in April of this year. In order to be eligible for municipal asset management program funding, the Operational Services Department requires a town council resolution of support. 
Uh, for an overview, the administration is seeking council approval of the following resolution that will accompany a grant application to FCM. Be it resolved that the Town of Osoyoos directs staff to apply for a grant opportunity from the Federation of Canadian Municipalities Municipal Asset Management Program for Gravity Main CCTV Camera Inspection Phase 1. Be it therefore resolved that the Town of Osoyoos commits to conducting the following activities in its proposed project submitted to the Federation of Canadian Municipalities Municipal Asset Management Program to advance our asset management program. One is a condition assessment reports for 5.1 kilometers of gravity storm and sewer main, including video and photos and relational database of information. Two is professional recommendation on tasks moving forward, including needs for future inspection, estimated timeline for asset renewal slash replacement, and a record of evaluation methodology. Be it further resolved that the Town of Osoyoos commits $22,000 from its budget toward the cost of this, this initiative. Please note that True Consulting Limited will be preparing and submitting this grant application for the Operational Services Department. The implications for the community are improved efficiency in identifying and repair, repairing sewer infrastructure problems. Organizationally, this sewer infrastructure condition assessment would allow the Operational Services Department to be more proactive and strategic in allocating resources to sewer infrastructure maintenance. Budget-wise, the Operational Services Department of True Consulting Limited will be applying to FCM's Municipal Asset Management Program for a grant of $40,000. The total approved uh, capital budget for this project is $62,000. Therefore, the town's portion of this project is $22,000 allocated from operating reserves. Significant dates, the application for grant funding must be submitted to FCM by August 31st of this year. Sustainability, improved information on the condition of existing assets will allow for the creation of more efficient plans for their ultimate and timely replacement. The options before Council are the Town Council passes the above noted resolution to support the Operational Services and True Consulting Limited's application for grant funding from the FCM's Municipal Asset Management Program. Option number two is the Town, town, town Council does not pass a resolution of support for the above noted project. Option number three is that Council requests additional information prior to making a decision. And the recommendation of administration is that Town Council adopt option number one. Thank you very much. <coughs> Councillor King. Yeah, I'll move option number one. Thank you. Councillor Rhodes is seconding that. Seems like a no-brainer. If you can get money and you seem to be good at it, then Work. we'll let you apply. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, next is the... Uh, general net payroll and Sun Bowl arena financial accounts and uh, to date August the 20th um, balances in the following funds are cash general cash requirements of three million six hundred nineteen thousand six hundred and forty four dollars and sixty cents uh, Sun Bowl cash requirements of seventy two thousand three hundred and forty dollars and forty six cents and net payroll of uh, and those are those two are done by consensus, and the third is the net payroll accounts of one hundred and eighty five thousand seven hundred and sixty two dollars and thirty nine cents and that is be received for information. Um, next is the building report, and um, we can see that the uh, the total for this month, the month of July, was seven hundred and fifty one thousand eight hundred. And um, we have a couple of, um, well, one new single-family dwelling, a couple of swimming pools. Um, and uh, l last year, to date, we had nine million seven hundred thousand. Did we ask the last time what that or that was that the fire hall? No, no, was that just general building? Just like general building, nine yeah. million. Wow, yeah. that's a lot. And and to eliminate any fears. Uh, uh, the number now is over is over 9.9 .9 million uh, instead I, of 8.2 yes wow so that's good we've yes. had lots of <laughs> lots of building um, around here so does anybody have any any concerns about this could we please have a motion to uh, um, the, to accept the building report thank you councillor Rhodes councillor Youngberg all in favor Thank you. And uh, no committee report, so we will ask the CAO for a report. 
Okay, just uh, a few of the activities uh, of the administration over the last couple of weeks. Uh, starting in community services, the uh, Sun Bowl Arena is in full swing with the figure skating school now scheduled for this week and also the Coyotes main camp. So hockey season is just around the corner. And I'm sure the Leaf fans are just waiting, chomping at the bit, right? Uh, the Senior Slow Pitch League will be uh, finished the season this week. Uh, Cactus Kids uh, Summer Program will finish this week. We had record numbers this year, even with the smoke-filled environment. Uh, Family Splash Day was held on Wednesday, August 15th. Thank you to AG Foods for sponsoring the event and to Roy Collins for making a donation for a cake. Uh, our occupational health and safety consultant was here last week and continued with his inside crew talks. And staff attended a municipal insurance risk management seminar for recreation services in Penticton. In terms of corporate services, uh, election uh, processes have begun. Uh, nomination period is September 4th to September 14th. Nomination documents are, are available uh, on our website, and we're just uh, in the final uh, planning session of, uh, of a candidate's information session, which will be held on September 6th. 6th. Uh, in the evening for anybody who is interested in running for council uh, or even if you're not interested in running for council coming out and finding out uh, how government works and uh, it should be an informative uh, session in terms of victim uh, a victim services worker position was hired uh, also uh, we've been busy with the municipal ticket administration uh, due uh, largely to our boat trailer parking in terms of uh, the finance department, uh, have reduced the number of pending tax sale properties from 16 to 2. Hopefully these will be cleared before the tax sale date of September 24th. The town has received preliminary approval for the OBWB uh, uh, grant funding for a main lift project. And tax requisitions have been sent out to all our taxing authorities that we collect taxes for. And that's why the extraordinarily large number uh, of 3 million plus in uh, the figures provided for council earlier. In terms of uh, planning and development, uh, a DP uh, de development permit was issued for a fourplex on 70th Avenue. Uh, 18 Loon Crescent is just waiting for a landscape plan and then the a DP will be issued. Uh, department is very busy with new building permits and uh, development applications. Uh, the province is still reviewing the tenure application for the Wibbit project. Uh, subdivision plans for the final two properties at Divin and Ridge are being prepared by the engineering consultant for the owner. Uh, preparations are underway for the next public meeting for the town center renewal uh, action plan September 24th at Sonora. And uh, that's it. Oh, sorry, public works. Uh, the uh, line painting has been completed uh, throughout the community. Uh, dust control has been applied throughout the community August 1st, and uh, uh, paving of 62nd Avenue should be underway right now. They were working this morning, and I can finally wash my vehicle. Mm -hmm. uh, claims for the uh, damage to Cottonwood Park uh, retaining wall caused by this year's lake flooding were submitted to the province, and uh, that project uh, with our proposed improvements is over $511,000. Uh, asphalt curbing was installed on Finch Crescent and uh, paving component of the water and sewer connection to the temporary worker camp was completed. And that's my report for today. Thank you very much. And we need a motion to receive the report. Councillor King, Councillor Rhodes, all in favor. Thank you. Um, and now council reports. Councillor Campbell. Thank you, Mayor McCordoff. Um, I attended, uh, along with uh, Councillor King and Mayor McCordoff, a meeting with the Minister of Environment uh, late last week. Um, prior to that, a week prior to that, I uh, attended the Airport Steering Committee meeting uh, to discuss uh, potential grants coming through. Um, other than that, um, just letting everybody know, uh, until the smoke clears, uh, try to keep your pets and animals inside the house, um, especially small dogs and, and small animals that have to breathe this in. Um, and also kudos to our, our fire department, fire chief, 
and the volunteers uh, that put on the car wash yesterday to help the dance kids get to Disneyland. Uh, it was a successful day. I think they raised just under six hundred dollars. And let's be honest, we we uh, anybody that brought their cars there did it for charity because ten minutes later their car yeah. was covered in, ash, right. in ashes <laughs> anyways. So uh, uh, good on the community for going out and getting their cars washed when there really was no point. <laughs> <laughs> But your nice blue car looks better. It's shiny. <laughs> Thank you. Councillor Rhodes. Thank you, uh, Mayor McCoyoff. Um, just wanted to take a quick minute to uh, acknowledge somebody in our community uh, that's worked awfully uh, hard on something that's always been very important to me, and that's our music scene in our community. Um, Alan uh, Bleakin is sadly leaving our community uh, very soon. Uh, sad for us, happy for him. Uh, he's taking on another life uh, change and challenge uh, at the other side of our country uh, very shortly and that kind of thing. I'd like to wish him and his family all the best of luck and everything. Alan was one of the founders of uh, the Three Amigos Committee that uh, started music in the park and anybody that's been down there on any of those Friday nights uh, can recognize uh, how popular and how well like that is by both uh, residents and uh, tourists in our uh, community. I'm going to use a figure that Mayor McCordoff gave me, I believe, uh, the Friday before last. There was almost 600 people that attended there was down 600. there. Mm -hmm. uh, just absolutely outstanding. Um, Alan has worked hard, uh, introduced uh, music to uh, JoJo's Cafe, uh, worked hard with them. Uh, just an unbelievably uh, uh, neat accomplishment in our community. Some of its, his efforts have moved over to the wildfire uh, grill. Um, I believe that they have, uh, uh, you know, regular entertainment in there because of the initiative that he's taken. And, you know, any Sunday morning at 7 o'clock in the morning, you can wander down to JoJo's and there's a bunch of musicians sitting out there playing and singing and having a great time. I mean, just a wonderful uh, addition to our our music scene in our town. I can remember 10 years ago uh, wishing that we would have at least one event, and now we have very, very uh, uh, well-attended and well-used, uh, and hopefully it'll be uh, sustainable into the future. I'm hoping somebody else will step up to the plate. Uh, way to go, Alan. Can't say enough uh, uh, good things about what you've done in our community, and you will be missed. And the last conversation I had with Alan, I tried to intimidate him into staying here. <laughs> uh, didn't work. He's motivated and moving very soon. See, we so. agreed on one thing today. We agree well, on one I'm thing. I'm glad today. you guys yeah. Yeah. that yeah. I'm in the middle here in case you don't agree. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I think Alan was, I don't know whether he managed to get music over at the cantina. Was he involved in that? No. But I think he did help with Up on Anarchist. Yes. There was music up there too. So on any given day of Friday night, you can go to three or four places and hear live music, which is pretty amazing. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm just selfish. I wanted to keep I know, it uh, I know. the town of a I agree. And, yeah, but he definitely has been involved in many other Absolutely. music events as well. Thank you. They Councillor King. I don't know if there's really much more to say, but <laughs> to thank in the, the music committee for Friday night. I did attend the last couple Friday nights, and the music's just outstanding. I believe it just gets better every year. And I'd really encourage uh, the public or the residents here in town to attend this Friday night. I don't know if it's quite the last night or not, no, or close to more. the last Friday night. Two, two more. more? Okay. And as Councillor Campbell said, we did meet with the Environmental Minister and uh, had some open dialogue. So thank you very much. Thank you. Councillor Youngberg. Uh, thanks, Mayor McCordoff. Um, been a busy month with a number of things. Uh, Desert Park, hiring a caretaker, getting it into shape because we're entertaining barnyard concerts and dances in Barn C. Mm. And we've had two that are free to the public. Been very successful in the respect that they were very uh, little advertising done on them and we had in one case almost 100 people and in the second case we had 40 people because there was so much smoke we couldn't breathe. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, it's um, a great initiative on behalf of that board and it's something bringing something new into the community and I think it's um, also music related and we have access to 
many of the groups that Alan Blaken accesses, mm -hmm. and it's um, all about sharing um, all sorts of information in the community to make music a, a much better and greater thing for all of our residents. Um, besides that, what have I done? The library has been on hold for a couple of months, but boy, the friends of the library did a great job on the book sale on Saturday. They raised $1,600. That's always put back into the library for the local um, members. And that's been just a, a really great thing. And all our kudos to Kathy Burton and Tom and all of her committee that worked so hard to make this happen. That's about it. Thank you very much. So I had a couple of things. Beside thanking Alan, which I had on my agenda too, because he's done an amazing job of bringing music to this town, I also want to say thank you to Clint Hawes, who uh, put on two um, uh, dance, what are they called? Street the dance. Street dance. Dances, street yeah. dance. I was mm -hmm. thinking he had, a, yeah, he had two of them. Uh, and he does an amazing job. He's a... Uh, gentleman who has a ton of energy and um, and had strobe lights and hula hoops and all kinds of things uh, the last time. So we thank all of these people who, um, who work so hard to put on music events for this town. You can't always attend them all because there are too many of them, so that's great. Um, I was in the um, uh, the Roots and Fruits Parade on uh, Saturday in the town of Oliver. Um, by the time I drove my Miata up there and was in the parade and came back, my eyes were so sore I had to go home and put drops in. That was a really bad day for the smoke. But um, uh, our president of the Festival Society was also there watching, so that was that was good to have um, to have Lynn there as well. So. That I think it's important for us to support Oliver and Oliver to support us because we've heard a few things in the papers lately about uh, uh, conflict between Oliver and Asuas, and I don't, I don't see it. I think that we're working very diligently to make sure that we don't have that conflict and that we work together because they're our neighbors. Uh, last week I was... Um, or 10 days ago, I was at the Okanagan Basin Water Board annual meeting, and it was uh, quite interesting. There was a lady um, there who was um, talking about uh, flooding, and um, Tasman Lyle is her name. Is She's an engineer. She gave an excellent report. Um, you could read about it in the Suez Times or parts of it because uh, Richard McGuire was also there. She was talking about um, there are three types of, uh, of people who look at floods. There's one, the bull, let's fight nature all the way and complain. The ostrich, putting your head in, your, in the sand and ignoring it. And there's the meerkat, and she encouraged us all to be meerkats. They surveyed the situation and worked collaboratively to, to deal with this. So her concern was uh, the impact on people who build in floodplains. And because we haven't had a lot of floods recently, um, it, it kind of uh, came to light this year particularly and last year. And she's not a fan of dikes, which was really one of the ways to deal with things because she says that squeezes the water in and upwards and increases the chance of failure. And I'm sure that um, there have been times when dikes have been broken and uh, and gone over the top, and they have not. It has not been a good, um, a, you know, good situation. So Brian Simons, who's also a member of the um, Lake Asui's Board of Control, was. Um, is there oh, somebody there? The group? No, not yet. No, okay, and um, and he talked as well at this meeting, and he was quite concerned about. The, the lake levels and the flooding situation. And one of his big things is we need to look at how uh, the current elevation of building a house may not be high enough considering what's happened. It, after the 1972 flood, it was moved up down here to 921 feet above sea level. So, uh, people who did build uh, at that level and who maybe put a crawl space in below that 
were okay. They didn't have damage to their main floor. The crawl space, you understand that that's a possibility of having some water in there, but when people use the crawl spaces for more than storage in plastic bins, then there happens to be um, concerns. So it was very interesting, um, the, this meeting, and they had good slides. But the other thing is that um, I remember when Councillor um, Campbell went to a Make Water Work uh, project in Kelowna a couple months ago. Well, guess what? We got second prize. So of all of the communities, Armstrong got first, and, bec and uh, we got second, and Peachland got third. We, we might have to collect them. I some side bets, but Did you? That's up to you. But the mayor of uh, Armstrong, Armstrong Cheese, knew he was winning the day before so he brought down because this is the third time armstrong has won so he brought cheese down um and gave each of us the mayors um a package of cheese and i'll tell you that it was delicious i ate the cheese <laughs> thanks <laughs> Anyway, that's um, that's all I had to um, to say. Lots of things on our agendas, of course, and uh, the next meeting you will, uh, which is right after Labor Day, isn't that amazing? In two weeks it'll be Labor Day. Everybody will be back to school. We have several other things on the agenda. So thank you for attending and for staying for the entire meeting, <laughs> Leon and Lynn. And thank you to staff for preparing all these reports. And um, we, I, we will, I will entertain a motion to adjourn the meeting. Thank you very much. One, two over here. All in favor? Can we take a vote? Yeah. No. Yes. Do we have these people here with the